This is your brain on drugs. Any questions? Hey there, fellow time travelers. Welcome back to Retro Renaissance, the channel dedicated to all things totally tubular from the 1980s. I'm your host Kevin and today we're diving into the world of 80s public service announcements and iconic characters that shaped the era. So grab your neon windbreakers and oversized Walkman headphones because we're about to embark on a nostalgia-fueled journey. Yes, there are probably a good 100 or more PSAs in the 1980s. However, there are three that were a constant on TV, at schools, and around our lives in the 1980s. They were McGruff the Crime dog, Woodsy the Owl, and Smokey the Bear. Yes, I know they did not originate in the 80s, but they heavily influenced the 1980s. McGruff here. I want you to learn a song that tells people to say no to drugs. Users are losers, and losers are users, so don't use drugs, don't use drugs. Let's kick things off with a pup who knew how to take a bite out of crime. None other than McGruff the Crime Dog. McGruff made his debut in the 80s with a bark that could scare any criminal street, teaching us important lessons about personal security measures, locking doors, setting timers for lights, and all the other basics we needed to know to reduce crime. And I still have that address memorized that they would play at the end of the commercial. Scruff McGruff, Chicago, Illinois, 60652. Scruff McGruff, Chicago, Illinois, 60652. Could help take a bite out of crime. I want it, I want it! Now sending a letter to this address, you would supposedly get a comic book for free. In an ironic twist of fate, McGruff sadly went to jail. Well, at least the actor associated with the character. John R. Morales was arrested in 2011 in Galveston, Texas after a drug-sniffing dog detected pot when he was pulled over for speeding. Police then found diagrams of two indoor pot-growing operations and a plethora of marijuana seeds. He was sentenced to 16 years in prison. McGruff was originally created by the National Crime Prevention Council, and there are around 4,000 active McGruff costumes still in use today. McGruff has a classy Corvette, a monster truck in Arizona, a wiener wagon in Florida, but most of all he likes to ride in patrol cars, assisting law enforcement. And McGruff's favorite crime-fighting techniques are to teach children about specific tips to be safe at home and school, and to help law enforcement officers do their jobs. Currently, some of the topics and resources offered by McGruff are bullying, cyberbullying, home and neighborhood safety, intellectual property theft, McGruff's four steps of gun safety, safe firearm storage, and selling your firearms safely. However, the character of McGruff wasn't just a crime fighter. He was a symbol of community empowerment. His impact was so huge that he became a beloved icon of the 80s, inspiring us all to be vigilant and look out for one another. So remember, Take a bite out of crime. Guys, and here's patrol of Hartford, Connecticut. There's 126 of them. Regular people like you and me working together against crime. Here's another one. Albert Bell. Yesterday, it was his turn to patrol. Halfway down a block, Albert sees a strange man nosing around a Barnett's basement window. Jacket. So, jacket. Albert calls the cops. The fast. <laughs> and the cops pick the guy up. Fast. Way to go, Albert. You know, when it comes to preventing crime, people like Mamie and Albert really make a difference. So could a person like you. Find out more. Write to Box 6600 Rockville, Maryland and help the... Uh, take a bite out of crime. I'm Woodsy Owl. Please give a hoot about campgrounds, because if you don't give a hoot, you will. Now let's talk about a feathered friend who soared through the 80s. Woodsy Owl, created in 1971 by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, Woodsy was all about the environment, and Woodsy was designed to be the same height as pre-adolescent children to really connect with the young crowd, and his catchy slogan, Give a Hoot, Don't Pollute, is still in use today. No matter where you go, you can let some people know to give a hoot, don't pollute, never be a dirty bird, in the city or in the woods, help keep America. 
Woodsy was created by Harold Bell, who had worked as a merchandising agent for Walt Disney, among others. He created Woodsy Owl together with Chuck Williams and Glenn Kavar, two employees of the Forest Service and technical consultants for the popular television series Lassie, and its collaborator, Betty Height. And Woodsy was a partner and friend of Smokey the Bear. Woodsy was created as the second U.S. environmental movement. During this phase of growing environmental awareness, Smokey the Bear, which had existed since 1944, was increasingly relied on for environmental education. The Forest Service was concerned that the bear, with the motto of forest fire prevention, could be misused through excessive use. Forest Service officials therefore commissioned the development of a new protagonist and message. Initially, there was discussion of making Woodsy a trout, elk, or raccoon. The latter in particular was up for consideration because raccoons wash their food before they eat. Instead, the trio decided to go with an owl due to the wise nature of the bird and how they could be found at the edges of urban areas, which made Woodsy appealing to urban and other populations. And the Give a Hoot, Don't Pollute slogan was a joint effort between Kovar, William, and Bell who collectively coined the motto during a brainstorming session. While Woodsy remained popular throughout the 1970s and 80s, the dawn of the 1990s saw the need for Woodsy to get a makeover in order to maintain relevancy with audiences. Yeah, because of course they did. Alongside with the children's television workshop, the Forest Service helped redesign Woodsy so he looked less like an owl and more like a person. The new and improved, Woodsy was much more slender and wore a backpack and hiking boots to project an active image. Why can't they just leave things be? Yes, we want old designs of logos and the flavors we used to have in the 80s, the bright colored artificial trick cereal and the gross toys. And yes, we want Woodsy to be an old timey, fanciful fella. Okay, rant over. The new Woodsy debuted on Earth Day in 1997 with a new jingle and a new message. In the 80s, when environmental awareness was on the rise, Woodsy Owl was the poster bird. He taught us to care for our planet, inspiring us all to pick up after ourselves and protect Mother Earth. Way to go, Woodsy. But look what happens when grown-ups and kids don't give a hoot about pollution. But Woodsy, what can we do about litter and vandalism? Just spread the word, give a hoot, don't pollute, and if you see litter, please, Pick it up, because if you don't give a who, who will? In the city or in the woods, please keep America looking good. Who, who? Remember, when you're in the forest, you're among friends. Now last but certainly not least, let's talk about the true legend who's been fighting forest fires since World War II. Smokey Bear, born on August 9th, 1944, Smokey was the face of forest fire prevention. Although artist Albert Staley was asked to paint the first poster of Smokey the Bear and the image that became iconic, Smokey's message was simple yet powerful. Only you could prevent forest fires. In the 80s, he was an animated bear with a ranger hat, but originally he was a legit real bear. One spring day in 1950 in the Capitan Mountains of New Mexico, an operator in one of the fire towers spotted smoke and called the location into the nearest ranger station. As the crew battled to contain the blaze, they received a report of a lone bear cub seen wandering near the fire line. They had hoped that the mother bear would return for him. Soon, about 30 of the firefighters were caught directly in the path of the firestorm. They survived by lying face down on a rock slide for over an hour as the fire burned past them. However, that nearby little cub had not fared as well. He took refuge in a tree that became completely charred, escaping with his life but also badly burned paws and hind legs. The crew removed the cub from the tree, and a rancher among the crew agreed to take him home. A New Mexico Department of Game and Fish ranger heard about the cub when he returned to the fire camp. He drove to the rancher's home to help get the cub on a plane to Santa Fe, where his burns were treated and bandaged. That bear cub became Smokey the Bear. Sadly, in 1976, on November 9th, Smokey the Bear passed away at age 26. His remains were flown back to where he was found in New Mexico. Also, Mr. the Bear would find himself in some controversy. According to the Salt Lake Tribune, recent fires actually highlight an ongoing debate among ecologists, whether Smokey should shoulder some responsibility for the flames that are now regularly sweeping across natural lands for much of the last century. Smokey was the pitchman for the federal government's aggressive wildfire suppression policy. That tactic, some 
some scientists believe may have contributed along with climate change to making American forest fires vulnerable to long-term combustion. They call it the Smoky Bear Effect. The reason is that the Smoky campaigns have fostered the idea that all fires are bad and preventable. Critics argue, in reality, fires are a natural part of our ecosystem and they regularly clear out old growth. As University of California's at Riverside professor Richard Minnick said, the government campaign at the height of the Smokey the Bear era ignored fire as a natural occurrence. Uh, that fire is inevitably going to occur in these landscapes, so the saying is, uh, it's now or later. And later is a bad option. But we Personally, I think Smokey's impact on the 80s was colossal. He taught us the importance of fire safety, and his message still resonates today. In fact, he's a symbol of unwavering dedication to preserving our forest. So the next time you're in the forest, be extra careful, okay? <laughs> if you knew it was me, would you have listened? Three iconic characters from the 80s who not only entertained us, but also inspired us to be better citizens of the world. McGruff taught us to protect our homes, Woodsy reminded us to care for the environment, and Smokey Bear showed us how to safeguard our forest. The 1980s were a time of change and growth, and these PSAs and characters played a vital role in shaping our values. They weren't just messages on TV, they were beacons of change. So as we wrap up this totally rad journey down memory lane, let's remember the lessons that these characters taught us. Let's take those lessons and apply them to our lives today. Whether it's looking out for our neighbors, protecting the environment, or preventing forest fires, we can make a difference, just like McGruff, Woodsy and Smokey did. Thanks for joining me on this adventure through the 80s. And if you like our little 80s channel, then go ahead and subscribe. That would be great. If not, you're here and that's all that matters. Until next time, stay retro, stay rad, and keep spreading positivity and change like these iconic characters did in the awesome 1980s. Catch you next time, fellow time travelers. And take a bite out of crime. Subscribe to Retro Retro!